And then, so when you hear the word diabetes, what do you think? Well, I think in the old days when I hear we talked about, we used to always call it sugar. But I, I think uh, for me, it is that the body is not processing the, the glucose and the stuff that uh, you uh, are acquired by the foods and things you're eating and the pancreas and all that stuff is not mm -hmm. processing it in a way so in, in my way of saying that you get an overload or an overage of mm -hmm. glucose in your system of course that naturally affects everything but it don't process it properly so, you have diabetes? Yes, I have diabetes. And how long have you had it? I've had it since 89. That's pretty long. Yeah, yeah it's been quite a while. Yeah. How did you come to get diagnosed? Well, <coughs> after I got out of the military, or I got out of the DAV, and so I was going to the VA, um, whatever their plan was, they call us in every so often. And that's how I was found, uh, just going through them, doing my regular checkup and testing, and came down with it. Did you have any, <coughs> did you have any symptoms? Or? Well, there was, uh, when I first started, there was thirst. I was consuming a lot more water. And I didn't, didn't really pay it a lot of attention because I would walk. I used to walk. I've always been pretty active in walking and running and things like that. Being an old uh, paratrooper and ranger person that I was pretty active mm -hmm. and so then I would have uh, at night I would have frequent trips to the bathroom that I could get up and go a lot to the bathroom so that's pretty much it you know I thought it just I was drinking a lot taking in a lot of water a lot of fluids and, and at the time I didn't think you know that mm -hmm. worked on me <laughs> until I went to my checkup, yeah, yeah. until I heard what it was. In your family, do folks have diabetes? Well, as far as I can recollect, I'm thinking that my grandmother had it, and, and I'm not sure, I'm, I used to hear my mom talk about it a lot, but she died before I was born, mm -hmm. and so we're, we're kind of thinking maybe back in those days in the 50s that Possible, there's a possibility mm -hmm. that she did have it because I know that uh, a lot of the offspring, like my uncles and, and aunties and things, quite a few of them had it. Mm -hmm. And so we are thinking that maybe, I don't know, it, it may have came from her mm -hmm. or some kind of way. So, but you, didn't have, you don't have a strong family history then? Not, not with diabetes or my mom, mm -hmm. or well, she's passed on now, she was basically um, well, later in her years, when, when she was in her 70s and things like that, she was borderline, as we call it. Mm -hmm. she, she never would disown a lot of medication, but just were uh, controlled it basically with diet mm -hmm. and things that she ate. And, and my father, he never had diabetes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How do um, um, people in this community respond to diabetes? Well, personally, uh, they, I don't think they really respond to it uh, very well, in my opinion, uh, because uh, I think it's still something they already know enough about it, and apparently they don't, they really don't. Uh, it's, you know, it's something that they learn to, to live with, and they're not doing a whole lot of things, in my opinion work against the, the disease that, uh, that we have today. They're just, I don't know. Yeah. Do you see um, a difference in the way, being a man, do you see a difference in the way men and women uh, handle diabetes? Well, uh, I can only speak for myself. Uh, I try to, when I learn that I had diabetes, I, I took an interest in it and I started looking at the different uh, uh, ways to uh, to live with it, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so, uh, and then there are some people that 
or they just, oh, it's just a little sugar, you know, pay it off, kind of play it off like mm -hmm. that. And, and they'll take a, uh, a real interest in it, but I try to take an interest in mine because of being aware of that, that uh, it will cause you problems down the road if you don't mm -hmm. kind of manage it mm -hmm. uh, a little bit better. But uh, I don't think everybody manages it as well as they should. What, in general, in the community, how do men respond to health issues? Are they concerned about health or? We, we, we are the ones that, are, that I deal with are, are concerned, but as always, men uh, don't go uh, as quick as the female will. You know, we, we, sometimes we think that, you know, we can just overpower it. Just keep going on. All if you, you know, if you'll do this or do that, you're not gonna. It's not gonna bother you that much. But I don't think we take it as serious as mm -hmm. the females do. Uh, in places where I live, mm -hmm. I, I see older men gathering mm -hmm. in McDonald's yeah. on most every morning yeah. and having coffee, a big bunch of them, sure. and talking. Does anything like that happen here? Well, we do have, with, with uh, there is a sect or a group that will gather uh, out at the uh, county market out here in Pyram in certain areas, and they do, have, I think they got what they call a breakfast club, mm -hmm. where they go and, and do the coffee and whatever else that they consume. I've observed them on several times. That, yeah, have you ever gone and had coffee? No, 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 no. You have just, to be invited, or? Well, I just don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just mm -hmm. don't have the time. And uh, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to ask you to use your imagination. If you were a fly on the wall, mm -hmm. and uh, were listening to the conversation that those men were having, what kinds of things do you think they might be talking about? Well, for this area here, they probably going to be talking about the weather politics, they're probably not going to be talking about their health or anything like that. I just, I just don't see them as, as talking about those issues. They mm -hmm. are, some may even, even be talking about their cattle or, mm -hmm. or, or their hay pasture or something like that. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, uh, maybe some of them even may talk about uh, their plants for the hunting area, hunting period when it comes in, you mm -hmm. know, uh, or how big the fish they call it or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, how many points that the deer had, you know. So basically, to me, those would be the kind of conversations that you would hear mm -hmm. uh, from those guys. Yeah. So what do you think it would take to uh, encourage men to be more conscious about their own uh, quality of life or health. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we got to some kind of way uh, get a diabetes education to where they know that it's, it's not gender specific or race specific or that don't care who it attacks, mm -hmm. and whether you're male or female or adult or child, teenager or whatever. Uh, that we got to find a way. Uh, to let them know that uh, they got to be just as concerned uh, as the rest of the population about their health mm -hmm. and, and their walk in life. You know, you know, you know. So, so I don't know. You know, I, I believe uh, diabetes education is one area that we can touch on, and then to me, the next. Uh, mountain to climb or obstacle would be, well, how are you going to get it to them? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be media or you're going to, mm -hmm. going to use the various uh, entities uh, that is available in the county. And of course, uh, being that I am a pastor, one of the, uh, probably the most uh, available uh, medium right now that I see would be uh, the churches on Sunday mornings and the, the studies and mm -hmm. the vacation Bible schools and things like that where you have mm -hmm. a larger 
aspect of the population would be in attendance of those areas. So you, we may have to uh, start looking at our, our pastors and our deacons and our church leaders to get that information mm -hmm. out, whether it be in a newsletter or however we need to do it. Is that, um, are you part of a, a ministerial group? I am uh, in this area. Uh, we don't have a ministerial alliance right here. Uh, basically, I live here, but I pastor in, in another area. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but uh, with the different local uh, religious organizations like the Congress, and, 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 and if we had a ministerial alliance where the pastors were organized, I think that would be one medium that you could use, and, and I believe that would be an effective medium because whatever that that pastor put emphasis on is pretty much what those people are going to do mm -hmm. are in this rural area mm -hmm. because, because that pastor have a lot of uh, influence uh, with his parishioners, and so whatever he tell them, they pretty much going to do it. Yeah. So, um, are there um, are there ministers that have uh, that it could be more persuasive with, with groups of people than that might be uh, willing to, to consider such a thing. Yeah, well, the, the, there's there are ministers. Pretty much all of the ministers uh, in the era that is sitting pastors right. uh, have a good bit of influence with their congregation, and that would to me would be uh, one uh, uh, resource. Mm -hmm that we could use in the county to, to, to get the word out about mm -hmm. diabetes and our health mm -hmm. issues and things like that. Do, do uh, the, the local churches have um, men's groups or women's groups? Or? Yeah, most most local churches, are, they have what they call the brotherhood, and they have uh, your women's, which we call in, in the Baptist setting, we have what we call a home mission. Home mission? Yeah, society. And those those home mission societies are, do things like nursing home ministries, or senior citizen ministries, or just a lot of areas that they have uh, uh, influence with, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, are in the home mission uh, department, you got a lot of the ladies, the senior ladies, are part of the of your homemakers groups and things like that. So mm -hmm. that would be one. That would be a Oh, it be an outstanding great uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah. And what do the men do in the Well, to me, and uh, like everyone else, we're probably the, the last to catch on. But we do have uh, what we call the brotherhood groups. And in the Methodist, uh, I can't remember their, what they call them, but they do have uh, a, a brotherhood group mm -hmm. also that where all the men will more likely get together mm -hmm. in those different with those different auxiliaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you use the word Congress. In, in, in the black churches, we have what we call the Congress of Christian Education. And, uh, and that's normally take place once a year where you have a gathering of a particular geographic area of all the churches. It may be anywhere from 20, 30, 40, 50 churches uh, that Is it have, the same denomination? Or? Yeah, that have aligned themselves together. Okay. And so in those settings, uh, we offer Christian education classes, we offer self-help stuff, uh, family type of uh, uh, activities, whether it's marriage and family, we offer the different various courses uh, from the National Baptist uh, Congress of Christian Education at national level, mm -hmm. and so, and we also have a, a local level, which we call your district congress. Then you have your state level, and with that, it could be anywhere from 50, 60 churches in your mm -hmm. state level. So, um, the church that you pastor mm -hmm. is it? Uh, connected to churches in Tampa County? No, we, we, we the, the only connection we have with the churches here is that I am from Tampa. I okay. live here. And so uh, I were 
at one time ahead of the Congress here uh -huh. um, before I moved and started pastoring in another area. And so. Uh, but you are connected still oh, yeah, to people who are involved. I, okay. I was the president of, of the, the District Unity Spring District uh -huh. Congress, which covers a part of Kemp County here. Mm -hmm. And I was also dean of, of the Congress here. Mm -hmm. And so the dean is basically responsible for, for, for getting the different uh, educational courses that that Congress is going to present for the year. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and with the dean, we do have uh, lectures. We've had anything from from where we have uh, lawyers come in, and we have health officials come in and talk to our parishioners about the different uh, mm -hmm. opportunities and activities that is available to them. Uh, gee, anything from financial management. So I can see that that being a medium to where we could also institute, you know, some, some, some Well, it seems, you know, you know, um, we have a diabetes coalition. Sure. But the, the really interesting piece, I think, about diabetes prevention mm -hmm. is that if you prevent diabetes, you sure. also prevent hypertension sure. and strokes yeah. and cardiac yeah. disease and on and on and on. Yeah. And so, it, and what it does is it improves the quality of life, life for, yeah. for all people. Yes. Young and old. So it's it's not just about thinking about a single disease. Sure. It's really about thinking about changing a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. And um, so so that then become makes it much more in interesting sure. to think about how to yeah. present messages to people who don't think they're interested. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You know, so um, this could be a way to begin thinking about maybe doing some work. It sounds like, it seems like churches would be one of the best ways. Well, in this area, being that it is rural, again, that's where you're going to get, as I say, your captive audience. Mm -hmm. they they going to be there on certain days or Saturdays are, uh, for instance, in, in the church I pastor in Choctaw County, uh, we are scheduling our family uh, enrichment type ac activities, mm -hmm. and so, and we do have when we, when we do have those activities, we have the nurses come in and check the blood pressure to do to do the finger sticks mm -hmm. and, and to do all that. We have the podiatrists to come in and do. Mm -hmm. Uh, to do the foot thing, so it's, it's, it's actually really the vehicle is already there. Mm -hmm. It's just up to us to get on board and start using it yeah. uh, for more than, and don't get me wrong when I say this, for more than just saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh -huh. Because in order to say Jesus, 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 you need to be well. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we could use that vehicle to get the message out. It seems that, uh, you know, when I, when I think of the word health, mm -hmm. I have a, a, a very big picture. Sure. And so I have a hard time thinking about being healthy if you're stressed all the time. Sure. Or if you yeah. don't have a job. Yeah. Or yeah. if you're so yeah. poor you yeah. can't think about paying your house yeah. bill. Yeah. Um, um, is that something that fits, you think, with people's religion and uh, faith here? I think it's a very real part of the religion from the pastoral standpoint or my congregation is not going to pay attention to me if they are stressed out if they worry about how I'm going to feed the baby or, or how I'm going to put food on the table or if they worry about keeping the lights on mm -hmm. so how can they cannot be affected mm -hmm. in the same way that which I share with them and I know other pastors do that if if you're not healthy, you're not going to be a very good Christian because, you know, a lot of resources that you could use uh, in improving your lifestyle, you're going to wind up doing, trying to just maintain, you know, your health and stuff like that. And so, so I think that, yeah, it, it, it plays a role. you, you got to have all of that to be, mm -hmm. to be effective in just living life. Mm -hmm. 
I had someone uh, recently say to me that uh, sometimes churches are only interested in their own maintenance or their own self well, good. And I'm sure that there are some out there but that are like that, but you're not going to last very long because if you, you know, if, if my people were not healthy, then I'm not going to have a meeting to, to speak to mm -hmm. or to deal with, you know, because if, if they're going to, you know, if they got deteriorating health, I'm going to do more hospital visits and I'm going to do more graveyard visits than, than I would be if they are healthy. So it becomes, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's probably one of the, the needs for me as, as an individual, as a pastor, I think it becomes my duty to ensure that my people have a better shot at life, to know that, you know, that they can live above whatever it is that they're going through. Okay, that's all. Um, well, it, it, it just um, it really seems to me that thinking about ways to incorporate sure. the church is going to be a way to, to really think about moving the whole way well, when I came along as a board in this area, that was the center of activity, the church. That's where we fellowship. That's where we did a lot of things because we couldn't pack up, so to speak, as we have a saying, and go to town mm -hmm. in this area because mm -hmm. uh, basically, and I don't mean any hard about it, was this was basically a segregated area. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much, our activities, mm -hmm. Or, or took place at the church. Mm -hmm. And so I think now that there is a need to, to regroup and allow the church to do what it's supposed to do, and that is to, to have a holistic ministry. Uh, you know, you got to do more than preach. Mm -hmm. and you really do. You, you, you really do. And so uh, I think that uh, at one time we was good at it. So now, you know, we, we just got to get back to it. Do you think there's a place where um, um, the races can come together in church? Yeah, it is. And, and, but we got to put aside our petty differences and start looking at a man or a woman, uh, uh, not what their skin looks like, but based on their character and what they bring to the table. Know, and this era, I tell people all the time, I should be prejudiced, but I'm not. Because, you know, you you, you got to look at the person for what they bring to the table. And, and I think uh, this is something that uh, that we actually really need to do in this era. Because if I'm sick, you're sick, it affects all of us. It don't have anything to do with the color of your skin. Well, there's one thing about yeah. diabetes, it yeah. doesn't matter yeah. what your color is yeah. or, you know, we're all at risk. Yeah, we're all at risk. And so, uh, I think for, for us to be successful as a society, community, town, whatever, that it is in our best interest that our people are healthy. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at it that way. Mm -hmm.